Hello everybody and welcome back to the Twitch TV lounge from here at DreamHack Winter. Uh, as uh, those of you who have been watching all over the course of the day will know, uh, we've been interviewing some of the top names in esports and uh, streaming personalities. And today I'm absolutely flabbergasted because I bumped into somebody I wasn't expecting to see at DreamHack. This chap next to me is uh, arguably one of the greatest players uh, in, in League of Legends history. I'm sure you'll have heard the name. Uh, it is Incarnation, and he's doing his first ever interview uh, with, with me. So I'm like blown away. So first of all, very pleasant surprise to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, how are things at the moment? Uh, things are going great right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no elaboration on that. Just well, I'm just chilling mm -hmm. for now. So why did you come to DreamHack specifically? Uh, I just came here to have a good time with some friends. Nothing serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you been to DreamHacks before? No, this is my first time. First time as well, so yeah. lots of first times going on. <laughs> um, so look, uh, where, where to start? Let's talk about, you know, uh, recent uh, de decisions have, you know, got, gone in your favour, that enabled you to start streaming uh, mm -hmm. the game, League of Legends, which is great news for people who want to watch you finally and yeah. see what you can bring to the table as a player. Um, how have you been planning, how, you know, planning all of that stuff? How's the streaming future looking for you? Um, when I get home from DreamHack, I will start streaming as soon as possible and I will try to keep it on a consistent schedule as well mm. and try to be as educational as possible. So you're going to be one of those streamers that focus on teaching people? The yeah, game. as well and yeah, just playing as well. Mm. So uh, what kind of plans or anything have you got to do it a little bit differently? Because obviously you know, there's been a lot of League of Legends streamers out there before you and mm. you know they're broadcasting their stuff so what are you gonna do that's maybe a little bit different um, I don't think I'm gonna do anything too different I'm just gonna play the game and try to be as educational as possible and like try to mention all the small details as well which people normally wouldn't notice I think well give me an example like positioning for example on the laning phase and so on and yeah I guess I mean, because I know you've uh, built your way up to being the number one uh, player, like you know, in solo mm -hmm. queue, like on multiple occasions. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say solo queue and team play, you know, it's it's very different. Being mm -hmm. good at solo queue doesn't really necessarily mean you're a good player. Other people say it's just a grind. The more games you play, you know, the, the more mm -hmm. if you're good enough, you'll win more and you'll climb up the rank. Um, you've done it in ridiculously fast times. Like, yeah. I mean, what's the record you've done it in, by the way? I think, wasn't it something like 50 games? It was stupid. Um, I don't actually remember. I had like... Hmm. I, I don't keep track of it, so <laughs> it's hard to tell. Roughly, if you had to take a guess? Uh, 150, something yeah. like that. Um, so, what's the secret? Everyone will want to know this. Well, What's the secret to climbing? I think games? it's just like having a lot of knowledge and being mechanically good. Yeah, but that's... You can't just say well, that. Because <laughs> people can't realistically... They don't want to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, can't do that at home. So give them, give them hope. What, it's, what can they do? Try to like look at your mistakes, like obvious mistakes, and just try to avoid doing them in the future. Like, As long as you play a lot, then eventually you will just improve and... Mm. Look at your mistakes and try to avoid doing them in the future. Um, I, I know you've played lots of different games before League of Legends. Mm -hmm. I know you had a World of Warcraft um, background uh, as well. Um, what is it about League of Legends that you like? I mean, what was it that got you into it initially? Uh, I like the way the game is. I like playing games where I feel like I can impact the game a lot by myself. Mm. And that's just what caught me in League of Legends, I guess. It's strange, because obviously it sounds like you'd be more interested in individual games, but this is a team yeah. game. Yeah, um, not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played any other, um, you know, esports kind of titles, any team um, games perhaps, like Counter-Strike? I like, I like Counter-Strike a lot actually, but I'm not that good, so... <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's, it's getting big now, you might want yeah. to <laughs> think about playing that pro. Um, but yeah, because I, I think it's interesting that, you know, the game is... You know, like, as you say, League of Legends, it's it is easy to win packed individually, but mm -hmm. in, it, you know, it kind of. I think a lot of people get frustrated with it because they look at what their teammates are doing, and it kind yeah, of feels. Yeah, you should always just focus on what you do yourself, because mm. 
but you, you can't you shouldn't have expectations for your teammates in solo queue honestly mm. so you should just try to focus on yourself and snowball it from there because mm. then it's actually not that hard to carry if you just do your own thing mm. and being selfish is also extremely good to be yeah yeah so selfish in a good way yeah 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 of course so again give, give me some examples because i've heard this from a lot of players down well, here they always say you know you've got to take charge. you should just if your jungler wants farm you should just take it from him and <laughs> not let him tax and so on and just tax a lot yourself <laughs> yeah it might sound a bit like as yeah mean to do but if you want to like carry yourself then mm. like be the carry on your team then that's the best thing so um uh, i know you watch uh, a lot of uh, league of legends or mm -hmm. What about, now that you're going to be joining the ranks of streamers and, and everything that's out there, are there any players that you like to watch? Any any streamers that you think, you know, I enjoy watching them? Hmm. I don't very often watch streams, so hmm. none that I can think of right now, yeah. actually. No. I, I think that's strange. You're probably the only person I know who, like, doesn't watch. Well, I, mean, I, I watch, watch streams them. from time to time, hmm. but I have, like, no favourites or anything, yeah. so... Not sure no one out there that's ever you've been watching thought, oh, I've learned something. <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, back when I was not that good, then yeah. Mm. But it wasn't, it was just to watch it because I was impressed, not because too much learning actually. Mm. Um, in terms of the, the current kind of balance of the game, I, you know, I want to get some thoughts about this. Mm -hmm. We've just had a big patch, yeah. uh, you know, the 420 patch, um, and and I've been talking to a few players, very mixed reactions to mm -hmm. it. Uh, I've heard some people say, as you know, I think you heard someone say it today earlier, that it's the yeah, worst yeah, patch yeah. ever yeah, yeah. in the game, which I think is a bit melodramatic. I yeah, don't think it's quite that bad, yeah. but it has significantly changed the dynamic of the mm -hmm. game. So what are your thoughts about it? Um, I actually like this patch a lot more because it gives you more space as a mid laner, for example, because you won't get ganged as often from junglers anymore. Mm. So that's a good thing at least, and yeah, the jungle is just stronger, which makes it easier for mid laner 1v1. Mm. And they did some changes to the towers and so on as well. So for example, champions like Zed might be changed a bit, mm. because you can't really split push as effective as you could before, mm. because of the towers and the buffs and so on. But um, then again, because the jungle is stronger as well, then it's, it feels easier to play mid lane. Yeah. I mean, I've got to say, the, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the tower shields. I, I, you know, mm. I don't know. I saw a few people complaining about them. What are your thoughts? Because, you know, you're a very aggressive player. You yeah. like to all in people. Mm. And, you know, and I've seen your Zed play, incredible mechanics, obviously. But, you know, that shield can make the difference between securing a kill, first yeah, blood, and not. It, no, not, not early on. But later on, like, like I said, if you want to split push or something, it's definitely harder to deal with mm. whereas with said you can't just straight up dive him under his tattoo tower anymore um what what else is, about 420 is there, is there anything that leaps out at you i mean any champions some champions just seem even though they've not been buffed or anything they just seem their win rates just seem to have shot up you know um i think it's just because of some of the items got buffed like in the jungle for example which makes warwick extremely strong in the jungle for example mm. Well, one of, one of your colleagues or, that we were talking to earlier, mm -hmm. one of the friends that you're here with, he says the exact opposite. He says that Warwick isn't overpowered oh. and the jungle's really weak right now. But, I yeah. mean, he's not as good as you, obviously. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, really, it's, it's, like, strong, but the thing is you can't gank as often with him like you can with other junglers because mm. you need your ultimate to gank. Yeah. So, I mean, if as long as your team won't fall too far behind, then... I think he's really strong right now. Um, I want to ask you about coaching. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is an interesting thing. I mean, you were one of the uh, high-profile coaches, you know, in Europe, and obviously coaching's being more and more recognised now in League of Legends. Mm -hmm. You know, you were you were associated with SK Gaming for a long period of time. A lot of people attributed, uh, you know, your success, their success to you. They mm -hmm. said, "Oh, well, you know, Incarnation, great player, and he's coaching them, so it stands to the reason they'll play better." But, you know, I, we're doing this interview here. You, you seem quite a quiet guy and quite reserved, <laughs> right? You know, like, so tell me what your strong points are as a coach. Um, I can, like, I don't, I don't think, I'm not normally that quiet. Mm. Um, but my strong point, points about being a coach, mm, like, 
I can help the players like fix a lot of like individual mistakes, for example, mm. and also like the team-based game, like strategically and so on. Mm. Uh, um, so, so like more like an analytical. Yeah, yeah, or... sort of like that. Yeah. So, so what what would you do? Talk me through. Let's pretend I'm an SK player. I know this is difficult. Mm. To... And you're going to give me a coaching session. How, how do you prepare that? How do you approach it? Um, like, it's hard to say it like that, but if you were to, if you were to play a scrim, for example, mm -hmm. if there was anything outstanding, like, for example, your warding, or, for example, if you forget to buy sweepers in time and so on, or, like, some... It, I, it's hard to do over one game, but mm. over, like, the course of three games or something, if I see you do, like, the same mistake over and over again, then I will talk to you one-on-one -on -one and mm. tell you this is not what you're supposed to do and you should try to roll more, just all these kind of things. All the play when I used to talk to the players in SK when I was at events and I was doing interviews and everything, mm -hmm. they all used to say really like positive things about you. They mm -hmm. all really liked you. Um, and I think a lot of people always kind of felt that would be the destination, you know, that's where you would end up at. You would always be associated with SK in some way or another. But um, it hasn't quite worked out like that. Um, yeah, is that a shame? Do you keep in touch with the players? No one. Oh, do you keep in touch with the players with SK? Um, yeah, you? I keep in touch with some of them from yeah. time to time. I talk to them, yeah. Some of them. Well, yeah, I don't talk to all of them as much. Like we're still on good terms and mm. so on, but yeah, we just don't talk as much. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I want to pick your brains just a little bit as well about kind of, you know, being a, a, a streamer and getting to. League of Legends, you know, kind of being able to stream so late. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, it's, it feels like the top streams are already kind of decided, you know. Yeah. They're called TSM, you know, they, <laughs> they, they basically even have a sleep rotation based around, you know, yeah, who's yeah. gonna stream and everything. Um, and it will overlap with European streamers. Do you think you'll find an audience? Do you think you'd be able to make, you know, a big impact as a streamer that people will want to watch you and you'll get big numbers and be able to make a living from it? Um, I hope so. I mean, I think I will make an impact yeah, but it's tough to say how big, mm. right now at least, but I will just try to be educational and I think a lot of people are going to want to watch me mm. because of my mechanics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mechanics have got to be the hardest thing to teach somebody else. Yeah. You, because yeah. I, I, you know, you could sit with me for like a hundred hours and I could, I, I'll never be able to do, well, I'm, I'm old, you know, I'll never Oof. be able to do the things you do. So it's like... I, it's weird to me that mechanical players are like the ones everyone wants to watch because you know you just you'll never be able to do that. Yeah, I guess people just get impressed and that's why mm. they want to watch you. Yeah. Um, so it, some general questions. I mean, I know I talked about streamers earlier. Mm -hmm. I know you followed lots of players in, in you know in the professional scene for a while. Has there ever been a player, a pro player, that's kind of inspired you and you know to want to be you know competitive and want to get into the game and want to be the best? Is there anyone that you thought, you know, maybe I could be like the next Froggen or anything like that? Um, there's not really anyone I want to be, but mm. uh, I mean, I guess Faker kind of. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard to say. I just want to play against him and that's that's it. That's, that's yeah. it, then done? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Done with the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I, I'd like to see that. Um, but look, so, uh, when, when are you going to officially start streaming? You said it's going to be after Dreamhack? How, yeah, how it's going to be wait? hopefully one or two days after Dreamhack. Okay. Yeah. So tell us tell us the name of the stream. Have you got a, you got the channel all registered yet? Uh, no, I haven't set it up anything. You as of yet. No. I was hoping you were going to plug it so we could tell people to watch it. <laughs> um, Do you know what it's going to be called? It might be on my Twitch. I'm not 100% sure yet. Okay. And that's Twitch TV slash incarnation with a zero okay. and not an O. All right, and uh, what about your Twitter as well, if anyone wants um, to follow you? It's twitter.com slash incarnation, lol, and that's with a zero instead of a O as well. Awesome. Well, look, it's been great to talk to you. Like I say, real pleasant surprise to see yep. you at uh, DreamHack. Totally unexpected. Um, wish you all the best for the streaming. I'll, I'll, I'll be tuning in. And there we go. So that was uh, Incarnation doing his very first ever uh, video interview. Um, and I do recommend you check out his stream. He is an incredibly good player. Anyway, um, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go too far, because we're going to have more interviews like this one from here at uh, DreamHack Winter in the Twitch TV lounge. <laughs>